What is up, everybody? It is your favorite white boy back to the Scavoli Tano show. No unboxing this week, guys. I know. Don't cry. Do not cry. I'm here. Do not cry. But we have a very special week ahead of us with interviews. And this lady that I have on right now, I don't know her name. She has a weird <laughs> name. So I'm just going to call her Era. Oh, there we go. Era. I said it right. Ha <laughs> ha. Winner. I win. <laughs> um, she plays an awesome Sabine, a Scarlet Witch, and so many more cosplays. Um, she's in the movie Doom that Kiefer Jenkins is going to be putting out May the 4th. I think I can say that. I think I can say that. He might kill me, but I'll say it. <laughs> I think it comes up with it. Um, but yes, uh, she plays an awesome Sabine. She's going to sit down, like she is right now, and talk to us about Sabine, Rebels, and what's to come for her for future cons, because we know cons are closed uh, due to COVID, unfortunately. And your stimulus check coming in soon. That's it. That's all I have to say. But, Ara, how are you, my friend? I am good. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, magical. <laughs> <laughs> magical. Uh, aren't we all? Aren't we all in the world of worlds? You know? I was saying we all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ara, before we start, um, how long have you been cast playing for? Oof. Okay, so I've been wearing costumes my whole life, technically, because my mom is a professional seamstress. But getting into the conventions and the cosplay, that started when I was about 13, 14. So that's been about 12 or 13 years now. Almost, whoa, going to start reaching 14 years soon. That, that's scary. <laughs> almost a decade. No, it is a decade. Yeah, it's a decade. Yeah, almost half or decade and a half almost. Wow. That's wow. a lot of math. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't, I couldn't even do that. I was like twelve plus two. Like, is that fourteen or fifteen at this point? We gotta carry the one. <laughs> you gotta carry up the one. Multiply that by six. There's parentheses somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> there is it's too, too much. That's why I failed math class. No, I was no. <laughs> I failed. I failed math class. Um, it's okay. So, Era, bef uh, so when you got the role to play Sabine for the Doom movie that's coming out May the Fourth, um. How did you prep for that? How did how did that come all about? So I was contacted by Doom, essentially, um, regarding Sabine, which was a, which was really, really exciting. Sabine is a wonderful character and she definitely means a lot to me. And there's a lot that I can connect with her with when um, it comes to playing characters like this or playing a character in a short film or even theatrically. I do have that kind of background. Um, I essentially start doing a lot of my character research and Sabine, thankfully, like there's a lot of character research done in just watching the show, which is great. I was obviously familiar with the show, familiar with the character, but to get into the mindset for this kind of a project, a short film or a film like this, playing her versus cosplaying her, I went kind of like a deeper route and I really started to, you know, ask the questions about you know, who she really is and what does she really want? What are her motivations? What is she really afraid of? Aside from what we see that she's giving us on the show, you kind of got to take um, a little bit of those steps as to finding out deep down, what is she going through? What is this girl experiencing? This is a teenager in the middle of a war. This is somebody who's, you know, got problems with her family. She's, you know, she is afraid deep down. She's got her own fears that she masks very, very well. And she does that, you know, metaphorically too through her armor as a mandalorian she's a warrior she's you know got this incredible background but she's hurting on the inside too she misses her family she you know has this found family which is a wonder wonderful thing but you know there's so much depth to her she's still hurting she's afraid she's you know scared she's got vulnerability which is great that's what humanizes her so for me it was about trying to find those vulnerable moments and trying to connect with them and, you know, talking with uh, Kiefer, the director, and what is she going through at this exact moment? What exact moment in time is this? Her connections with Kanan that, you know, we know she has that father-daughter relationship with him, but, you know, this is the only father she has in her life right now. So there's connecting with that and, you know, Hera as a mother figure and her turmoil and Kanan's turmoil and just trying to really humanize these characters deep down um, I even watched some interviews with like Tia Sakar to see how she presents herself even outside of portraying the character and watching her body movements, her body language, and just, just trying to do these little, little puzzle pieces and really sit down and study this character and who she is and try to build that into my own performances 
with any character really but you know sabine it was a lot of fun to just sit down and really think about sabine think about this character you know and every little aspect about her and put that little puzzle together I like how you do that. I like how you said that. I was in, I was like intrigued. I was like, say more, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Just an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> Just an hour later. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't wait for the movie. I um, I can't wait. Um, we're gonna have Kiefer on the show soon, guys. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, don't worry. We'll tell him you said hi. We'll tell him you said hi. <laughs> Big <laughs> um, concern. <laughs> yeah, she was on the show before you, Kiefer. So uh, she's got props. She's got props. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, how was it there filming due to co uh, COVID? It was during COVID, right? You guys filmed. Yeah. So how was that? Because yeah, I know so how, to, how to. Did you have to stay six feet away from each other? Was there someone telling you that? <laughs> We, it's, it's definitely a difficult time right now, especially for the arts and for entertainment right now. Like our, as an actor and as a, an artist too, it's just our world has come crashing down and it's, it's terrifying. We're all dealing with, you know, not being able to, you know, have our passions and really express them as we normally would. There's, there's no theater, there's no, you know, productions are being shut down and it's a scary, scary world right now. And, you know, we have to keep, living too so we have to live safely and we have to do it with you know as much concern and compassion for everybody else working the sets and the crew and that was something we definitely all understood we took every precaution we could we wore our masks i i double masked um i stayed away from everybody prior to this i do not go out i was not shopping i was i did everything that I could to take these steps to protect my castmates and, you know, people on set. Um, I even, you know, talked to John about this stuff, John who plays Kanan. Um, you know, I haven't been doing anything. I haven't been anywhere because obviously we have our scenes together. So I, you know, I want everybody to be comfortable knowing that we have done everything we can, every precaution. Um, I mean, I, I do my little workouts and all that stuff. And I was pumping up on my vitamins and on my, um, I was gonna say eucalyptus, but it's not eucalyptus. Uh, elder, <laughs> elderberry, all that you know, immune system thing. So I, I did a lot to do my best to be safe as I could for everybody, and so did they. We did everything. There were masks. There were sanitizers. Um, the studio was sanitized like crazy. Everything was done to you know top tier safety precautions with this stuff it's just sad because you know this is such a an environment that is so incredible to be a part of in this entertainment world there's it's not the same there's no you know backstage with your castmates there's no um connection like you really really do on these kind of films or even theatrically you get close to your castmates and everybody does become that found family that you have but the connection is severed because we can't, you know, connect like we normally would. You can't, you know, goof around. Um, you know, rehearsals are online now and, you know, auditions are online. Everything is so, so different. So that's the one sad thing. <laughs> it's just, it's limited. It's, it's, it's not as grand as it once would be. But again, we did everything we in our power to keep everybody safe and we did we did we had no problems oh that's awesome i can't wait to, i really i'm so excited <laughs> you're gonna love it i'm so excited i really i'm just gonna sit on youtube and go yes this is what i waited for this is what i wanted this is what i, I came out of home and this is what i was looking for <laughs> wasn't rebels it was a short film it was a short <laughs> film now how long is this film can you say that or not yet uh, i don't know if i can say that it was keeper keeper <laughs> I'll have him on the show, so if you can't answer, I'll just ask him when I see him. I'm not sure. For safety, I for safety I won't, but okay. um, whisper whisper. Yeah, I know. Kiefer just in her ear, don't say it. Don't and say it. He just punches through my curtain. <laughs> um, so what was your favorite part about filming um, the Doom short film? I had a lot of fun um, doing uh, the Darksaber stuff. Ooh, with, now, uh, I don't know. Before we get into that, now how did you do the dark saber? Was it a, was it real? Like, was it like someone handmade it? Because we know some people handmade it, and then the blade is like not handmade, but was like 
I, I oh, guess, it was handmade. <laughs> no, it was yeah, handmade. That's what I'm gonna say. I was like, what am I gonna do? Say not. But it was handmade. Yeah. It, it was it was it was handmade. It um it lights up. It does the sound effects. It does all that fun stuff. It's a beautiful prop. Um, I'm small, so it looks gigantic against me, which which kind of works like cinematically and storytelling wise because Sabine is so small in this um part of the story in a sense. But it yeah, it makes the noises. It's it looks like the dark saber. It's it's really 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 cool. Um, it hangs on my wall, but um. Yeah, that, that was like, the, to me, that was the coolest thing because, you know, we were, um, we were filming right next door to where they filmed the Mandalorian in that canyon area. Oh, really? So, yeah. So that area is very, very uh, similar to that area. It was, you know, 10 minute difference, maybe. I don't know. Kiefer, don't quote me on that. Don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that little canyon area where we filmed the dark saber sequences that that was cool because you're there and you could definitely feel that environment and it felt like the trials of the dark saber scene and um john did work with me on um the choreography this the fight choreography with that because i have done fight choreography for short films before i am not somebody who is skilled in sword or anything like that i would love to learn more so it was definitely a very realistic sense of he is teaching me and I am learning and I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so that that was that was cool because it really felt in the moment. And you're working with the dark saber. That's that's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come wherever you live now and just take it off your shelf. Hey, I mean you gotta fight me for it, but um, <laughs> you gotta get I'm through gonna... me and then you gotta go through like Bo Katan, who's probably in my backyard waiting to ambush <laughs> and get a back. <laughs> I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Baby Yoda and I'm gonna bring yeah. my Ahsoka Tano Galaxy Edge lightsabers. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you might win though. And then and then, and then Katie sack off, of course, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I, and then I can't kick her ass. She can kick my ass though. But yeah, I can't kick hers, you know? she's just waiting in my backyard with binoculars for the right moment <laughs> to strike <laughs> and get that back. <laughs> but that's awesome! I can't believe I didn't know that was real. I thought it was just like a prop, and then he added like effects to it. Um, like what, um, the real actors use, they don't use real things. They use the fake ones. Yeah. Yeah. So like, obviously like there, there will be a, um, some enhancements to make it stand out and, yeah. you know, work for film, but it does light up. It does, you know, do all this cool stuff. Um, my buddy made the blade, oh, does wow. it by hand and he, he sells them. So Jedi Ju J, um, he, yeah, if you want a dark saber, definitely go to him. Yeah, you're gonna have to text me that. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> After this, just go. Okay, let me say Christmas. That's it. Yeah, that's awesome. Merry Easter, Merry Easter. Yeah, Happy Easter, Merry Easter, and then there's your dark saber. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. He does the blade too. No, not the blade. Uh, the hilt. The hilt I got from I don't remember the name. Forgive me. Um, but I can definitely send you that info too, where I got the hilt. But yeah, Jay does the. The blades and some really high quality dark saber stuff. Oh my god, I'm so excited! I can't wait to start hitting people with it. No, oh, yeah, right. See, yeah, it works. That's how you. That's how you social distance now. You just carry the dark saber with you. Everybody backs away. It backs off now. They says now you stay six feet away. Now you do. Now you do. So you don't come near. Exactly. Me. It's better than like swinging my arms rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> and just saying stop six feet. Stop it. Stop. Yeah, it. or the spray bottle effect. Now, my next question to you is, how was it like working with everybody that you didn't work with before? It, it was great, honestly. I love working um, with a cast. Um, it's always exciting with a new cast or with, you know, castmates that you don't know and castmates you're familiar with. I, I, I know John, so that was, okay. I was familiar with him. Um, I hadn't worked with Ray before and I hadn't worked with, um, Jen before who operates Chopper, which was fun. Working with Chopper was fun. He's, you know, a cast made it himself. Everybody's a sweetheart on that, on that cast. Everybody's a teddy bear. Everybody's so much like their characters. It's insane. Like you're literally not acting yet. Nobody shouted, um, you know, I mean, obviously cut is shouted, but we haven't started filming. Nobody's done anything yet. And all, you know, everybody's just their characters in real life. It's so cool to see how like you can actually pull 
from them. John is very much like Kane and Ray is very much like Hera. Chopper is Chopper and Jen does wonderful <laughs> with him and putting up with me arguing with him on set. That's that that was fun. That was an experience. <laughs> so I it, it, wow. <laughs> I gotta have Jen on the show. Now I want now I want her to come on and talk with Chopper. Oh, oh I wanna, definitely. I wanna fight with Chopper now. Oh yeah, like you you gotta fight with Chopper. That was an experience in a lifetime was just, you know sitting while they're shooting scenes and you know watching chopper and you're just like glaring at him and i put my little helmet on him and all that fun stuff he, he's great and jen's wonderful too she's so nice now when great. she controls chopper i know i'll ask this to her too but when she controls Chopper, does it make him does it go like his sound and everything and he has the little thing and everything his little hand yeah he moves like his head will move and he you know he can exp it's so weird how you can tell what his expressions are because we know chopper so there'd be moments when you, you know, I hey Chopper, and he just turns around and looks at you, and it's like, okay, oh, we're fighting now. <laughs> like you're looking for, like you want to start beef with him, you want to start trouble with him, you can't help it. He's he's real next to you, like that is so cool. That is like I'm geeking out right now. Like I want I want a Chopper. Can she make me a Chopper? Honestly, I want a Chopper. Like that's ins that's. Incredible. I've sent her messages like tell Chopper. <laughs> right. I'll DM Chopper himself. Let's see if it responds. Like, I know. Let's see if I was like, I think he unfriended me, and it was probably Chopper the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was him. <laughs> oh, Chopper! I love Chopper. Chopper's one of my favorite droids. Oh yeah, he's my favorite. I love him. He's my one of my favorites. Um, so you said Sabine was um one of your favorite characters in Star Wars. Now, who are your top three favorite Star Wars characters? Ooh, and why? So and why now I have to write an essay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorite character, I honestly, my favorite character is Kanan. Oh, okay. I, I love Kanan, I love his story. To me, he's the perfect example of like, you know, someone who's had a horrible, horrible experience and grief and is suffering. And yet he's still a good person. He has a good heart, he loves his family. He takes on, you know, these kids that aren't even his and has to raise them. He has to step into this whole role of being a mentor and a father at the same time, not just to Ezra, but to Sabine too. And, you know, that that's big steps. And he's, you know, Kanan's, I think, 29 when this starts and then goes into his early 30s. You know, he's, he's, he's young. He's a young guy who had so much taken from him. And in reality, he's he's gotten it back through this found family. And, you know, he's basically Hera's husband. We all know that. Um, but he's, he stepped into this big role and he, you know, as someone who, if you've read A New Dawn, you know, suffered and was an alcoholic and had, you know, a lot of trouble, understandably so. Um, but that he's, he's cleaned it up and he's become this wonderful, wonderful man that he always was deep down. He was, he's hurting. Everybody in this show is hurting. <laughs> But I love that story. It was a, the coming of age story of Kanan just stands out to me so, so much that he he's definitely my, my number one favorite for that. That's, you know, wow, he's been through so much. <laughs> I, love, I love, see, and like, you know, in shows like you have, uh, how can I put it? Uh, like you have someone you hate in those shows. Like you mm -hmm. have like the main cast, like we know like uh the Inquisitor was there, Thrawn, but they're they're really not main, but they mm -hmm. are main characters because but they're not in every episode, like Ezra was, Sabine, Hera, Chopper, yeah. Zeb, and Keenan. Um but like I don't hate any of them. Like I can't hate <laughs> throughout Star Wars. Like I even the Clone Wars, like I didn't hate anyone. I just hated Palpatine because I know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, how could you not realize that? Like, I I don't know. <laughs> but, he was right there. <laughs> he was literally right there talking to you, and you could not even sniff that out. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't hate anybody on that. Like I can't I couldn't. Like someone I'll be like, oh, I didn't like that character. But like, mm -hmm. I'm like I keep going, keep going. Give me more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know like people hate Ezra or don't like Ezra and I understand, but it works for him because he's a 15 year old boy. Yeah. He's annoying. You know, we were all <laughs> annoying as teenagers. I know I was, but you know, he's, he's, and you got to realize too, he, he's an orphan. He's a street kid. You know, yeah. that's background and he grows and he matures with the story, which is awesome to see that again everybody in rebels has this coming of age 
process and story to them. Everybody's got tragedy. Everybody's got death. Everybody's got redemption. And it it's literally in every single one of those characters. It's hard to hate them because they're given so much. There isn't a single character I dislike on there. I mean, even Hondo. <laughs> Hondo. I love Hondo. <laughs> Hondo's a jerk, and yet we love him because he's he's Hondo. He's got so much to him. He's just he's just there. <laughs> like I liked him in Clone Wars, but in Rebels, I just loved him more. Like Rebels, like. Oh, anyway, it's he's the kind of guy that he walks on screen, and you're like, this guy again. <laughs> Like, what do you want now? What do you want now? Honestly, you're just like, oh, here we go. It's that meme that here we go again. <laughs> you just gotta pull up. This is where the fun begins. This is, yeah, just <laughs> a single tear. <laughs> um, so who are your other two favorites? Um, well, let's see. Okay, so Kanan. I do love Sabine a lot. She's ob obviously, again, because I, I definitely can relate to her. Um, in the beginning, it was very much, you know, no, I don't. I don't see myself as her. I don't, I don't really, I can't relate to her. It was my friends and even family that were like, no, 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 no. That one's you. I'm like, I, how, why? And then as I watched more and more, it was like, oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> so I, I definitely have to put Sabine as pro probably my second favorite, but I would say, um, again, like we talked about earlier, she's got so much going on. She's got so much depth. Mandalore as a concept in general is just... Wow, there's so much to it. There's so much storytelling, so much lore, and so much myth. Um, I'm uh, Hispanic and Native American. I'm Navajo Indian. So I definitely found the connection there with, you know, your culture and, you know, ancestry and the importance of artifacts and stuff, too. I know, like, Harris Calicori, in Hispanic culture, we have a um, uh, mocajete, which is what we use to, you know, ground, um, like, guacamole and... Um, I'm forgetting the names of all my stuff. Salsas and chilies and all that stuff. And it's passed down from generation to generation. So mine comes from years and years and years ago. So there's there's these connections you find there with their cultures. Obviously, that's Harris culture. But um, you find these little things. And I find a lot of that in Sabine with, you know, my own ancestry. So there's a personal connection with Sabine. There's, you know, who she is personality-wise is, is very similar, I would say, to me in real life or to my friends who know me. Um, we're both sarcastic, <laughs> we're both artistic, we both, you know, come from families of very, very, you know, proud cultures and proud heritages. So there's a lot of that and I love how she does her armor. Honestly, I would do my armor the same way. I love, I just went ham on a trash can in my backyard painting it because I wanted to paint something. Um, there, there's so much to her and I, I you know, I don't want to talk for two hours about how great of a character she is but she's a favorite definitely for a lot of that personal you know reasoning and stuff that i can find with her <clears throat> loves to be loves to be yeah she's great she is yes she is she has you know she's she's subbing she's just that one character that you can't help but love her she's got through so much and she's grown so much and she's got so much unique creativity to her she's wow she's fantastic she is. She is. Yeah. Lovely. Now, third. Hmm. <laughs> That's um, the hard <laughs> Yeah, now the third one. Yeah, now I'm going to say, who are you going to pick for your third one? Evilness. Ooh. That's going to be... Hmm. Now, I do love Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. I really, really like Obi-Wan. But I love Satine, too. You can, pull, you can do both. Okay, then let's do both. <laughs> Because their dynamic is like important too. There is. I love. Oh, I love. I love that arc because you don't know he had a like he had a romance, you know. And then you find that out in Clone Wars. And you don't find that out in the movies. Like that's why Clone Wars is so important. Yeah. So important. So it, yeah, it fills the gaps. It does. It definitely does. And Satine plays such a major role to Obi Wan's character because we realize just how much he has in common with Anakin. You know, he's fallen in love with somebody he shouldn't have fallen in love with. Or, you know, the forbidden love trope, essentially, because she's Mandalorian and he's a Jedi. And fight me that Corky is not his son. <laughs> I, I thoroughly I, believe that theory. <clears throat> I do too. You cannot I, tell me that is not his. It, to me, it, 
I like the idea of it because it does add again more depth to Obi Wan and to show that he and Anakin were very similar after all. You know, Obi Wan went through the same thing and did not yeah, turn. But I, but I hope we find it out. I hope we find that out. Like, if Corey yeah. is son, I would, I would lose it. I would throw my phone as I'm walking to Disney Plus. Here. I'm like, I fucking knew it. Yeah. And it's like. <laughs> Start throwing stuff, like throw my whole room up in the air. I was like, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> but like, you know what Obi-Wan is though? Obi-Wan is, how can I put it? Like he's more smarter than Anakin, if I can say mm -hmm. that. He's, like, yeah, like the maturity, the wisdom. Yes, like he knows, to, he knows to let go, but with Anakin, he never let go, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's where they're different, but they are similar to each other. Yeah, um, like let it consume him, and Obi Wan just allowed himself to kind of feel and let go. Yes, like I know I had. If Corky is my son, I know I had a kid. You had two, but <laughs> I had two before you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So my last question to you, my friend. Um. How? If if I, if someone out there is ready to cosplay, what is the one thing? you would tell that person, like advice you would give them if they're stepping into the cosplaying and short films like you are. Uh, what is the one thing you could tell that those people? Have fun. Do not ever not have fun. Do not ever do it because it's a chore or because like, and same thing with like acting and um, theatrics. Don't do it for fame. Don't do it because you wanna be rich. Don't do it because you wanna be Instagram famous. Don't do it for any of those reasons. Do it because you love it, because you wanna do it, you like these characters, you wanna have fun. Nothing has to be perfect, especially when you're starting out. Nothing, even now, as long as I've been doing this, you know, nothing is ever perfect. You will always be learning. There is always something to learn. There's always somebody wiser than you. Um, there's always gonna be somebody that, you know, knows less than you, no matter where you are in life. And you got to take that and help each other grow. Grow with your mentors. Uh, always ask questions. Learn. Have fun. Don't be afraid either. I know stage fright can be a thing for some people. Um, my advice for that, honestly, and I, I think it's good advice for cosplayers too, and for anybody that wants to act or step into this creative entertainment world, is, you know, embrace that. Be. It's okay to be afraid. You gotta. You gotta think of it like a Jedi. That fear is there. You can't block it out, but embrace it instead. And, you know, take that energy. Fear is energy. Take it and do it. Just do it. You you know, you have to start somewhere. Uh, we all do. And we all experience these things. But if you're having fun, if this is, you know, you know, your heart's in the right place, you know, this is where you belong everything will fall into place and everything will work out as it's supposed to in the end it's it's you got to have fun you got to love it um it's okay to be afraid it's okay to feel these things we all do but in the end you're having fun you've made these memories you've learned you've grown and it doesn't even matter if it's you know the smallest of things you still did it and that's great you can have you know you can go to a con and wear the little sheet and be a ghost. <laughs> you know, you, you did it. You still put on the costume and you still went out there. Sometimes this stuff is scary. It, it really is. Sabine's easy because she's got a helmet. Hello, helmet. You can hide behind that. I mean, the same thing you can do metaphorically. Put on your mask if that helps. Be the character. Or you don't even have to be the character. It's just wearing the costume. That's okay. But have fun. Please don't ever forget not to have fun. That that hurts me when when people, you know, are so stressed out about this stuff. It's it's sad. You you know, stress happens, but it should be a happy stress. It should be a fun stress. Enjoy it. Love it. Have fun. Please don't and don't ever not have fun. Don't ever grow up with this oh stuff. God. That's me. That's why I love baby other. Yeah. Honestly, don't ever grow up. That is like my number one advice in the world. <laughs> don't I, grow up. <laughs> don't grow up. Oh, that's so, oh, I could hear it. Just preach it. Keep going. Just preach it. So we, can go, <laughs> we can talk for an hour. Just preach it. Keep going. <laughs> and then remember, <laughs> if you win the dark saber in battle, you are Mandalore. But Katie Sackoff is gonna want that back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how she lost it. That's for another time. That's for another episode. <laughs> that's the that's the that's the sequel. <laughs> that's the sequel. Um, but um. Ara, 
I said it again, right? Yes, I said it again. <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, <laughs> now, where can everybody follow you on Instagram? No, no, Instagram. Where can everybody follow you on the social of meteors? Uh, well, the best place would be Instagram. You'll see a lot of my my cosplay stuff there. Uh, Lioness cosplay is what I go under. Um, my acting and film is under Aravis Ray, A R A V I S R E Y. That's you know where you'll find my uh, like short films and little behind the scenes stuff. I do post stuff from Doom, um, so you will find some of that stuff there. That's more of I guess my film theatrical Thank side. You. For, yeah, for costumes and for cosplay and all that, definitely the Lioness cosplay for Instagram. Lots of Sabine there, tons and tons of Sabine. She's everybody's favorite. <laughs> um, I'm trying to do a little bit more to interact with my audiences. So I hope to maybe jump onto YouTube and we'll try to explore that where we can talk about Sabine and talk about Rebels like you know we're doing here. Um, yeah, that's probably the best place. I did join TikTok, but mm -hmm, I'm kind of a generation <laughs> behind, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. And, Figure out what kind of fun Sabine stuff, you know, my audiences would like. So we're learning. We're learning. We're learning. Oh, that's so cool. And then, guys, I will put the links all to her um, her Instagram. You just send me those. Um, and then I'll put them in the link in the bio. And then you guys can go support her because she's amazing. Um, she is one of the talented. She's so, she is so sweet. Like, oh, my God. I just, it's just, I'm a white boy blushing. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's all I can say. That's all. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today, um, Era. I really appreciate you coming on, talking uh, about Doom, Sabine, um, cosplaying. Um, and you're just an amazing person. And I can't wait to see what's to come for you in the future after COVID. Because you are talented. You are so sweet. Um, and... They're just amazing. That's I don't know what to say after that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been fun. I love talking about Rebels. I love talking about Sabine. Oh, All that fun. You definitely have to come back again, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll just talk about Ahsoka nonstop. I know you love Ahsoka. Yeah, I, I do. Like, like right here. Like I have Ahsoka fly. Oh! My Nemo. Oh, he's so cute. I know. Look at his little sweater. I know. It's so good. Oh, no, you fit me. <laughs> no, I, I, that's why I was like, well, can it fit me? It, I tried. It didn't do it. Couldn't get it on. Couldn't get it on. Um, but guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Scavoli Tana Show. Stay right there. Um, Era. Because I, have to, I have to stop because I can't say it like in the sense. The other <laughs> <laughs> um, but guys, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Scavoli Tana Show, for more unboxings that I have coming soon. I have my Star Wars Celebration unboxing coming very soon. Um, more interviews with the, um, the Doom cast. That's the movie's very coming. Um, I'm going to put the links in the bio for the movie, the trailer, and um, everything. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you, Era, for coming on. Oh, I said it in a sentence. Oh, feel accomplished. <laughs> um, uh, and she will be on again soon, guys. Um, and guys, may the force be with you always. Thank you. Be kind to one another. And I'll see y'all soon. Bye. In my life, when you find people who need your help, you help them. No matter what. <laughs>